Greetings, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us on today's webinar. My name is Cheryl Jennison de Proza, and I am joined by friends and colleagues Laura Davidson and Justin Bowler. And today they're going to be talking us through how to use Sure Motive microphones for streaming and recording. But before we get into that, just a few items of housekeeping. First of all, this webinar is being recorded and will be available for on-demand viewing. Um, it'll take us a couple of days to make sure that the audio sounds good and get it edited, but once it is ready, it will av be available at shore.com slash webinars. And just so you know, that website, shore.com slash webinars, has a ton of great uh, past archived webinars across a lot of different audio topics. So please feel free to go there and see all of our past webinars. You can also see all of our upcoming webinars there as well and, and register there as well for those. So that's sure.com slash webinars. Second of all, as we go through the session today, if you have any questions, please feel free to type those in the question pane. If you don't see a question pane, there's one of two places you can find it depending on how you're logged in today. If you're using the web app, um, the GoToWebinar web app, um, you should see sort of a little question mark in a circle. Just click on that. If you are using the actual uh, application GoToWebinar, look for a dark gray toolbox, toolbar with an orange box with a white arrow in it. Click on that orange box and you should be able to access the question pane there. Get all those questions as we, in as we go through, but please note that we will be holding on those until the end of the session. And then last of all, just to let you know, we are um, not, rec not broadcasting, as you can tell, from our usual controlled environments. We are all coming to you live from our homes. Um, so please feel bear with us if we have any sort of audio or technical issues. We'll try and work through those. Um, but we are certainly kind of coming from a unique situation as we all deal with the current pandemic that we're all going through. Um, and then just one last thing I'd like to say is that uh, later on in this presentation, we will be playing some audio files for you. Um, so we would highly suggest that you use a pair of headphones or earphones to view this webinar so you can really kind of hear, hear what those audio samples sound like and what the differences are. All right, so I think that wraps up the housekeeping. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to launch a poll that I meant to launch earlier, so sorry about that. <laughs> um, but I am going to launch a poll right now for everybody. Um, so you're going to see that pop up. And we would like to know that if you are a Motive user, what is your favorite Motive product? Um, so please feel free to make your selection there. And we will tally up those polls. Oh, these numbers are rolling in, and they're very interesting. Very, very interesting. I think you guys are going to be I love that it happens in real time. It's so cool. Yes, indeed. I feel like I'm on America's Funniest Home Videos or something, and we're picking the winner. It's exciting. We're Who's still, it going to be? Who's it going to be? This is, this is actually very, very interesting. I think you guys are going to be surprised by these results. Um, while we're waiting for those votes to roll in, I will say that we did get one comment already, which says, nice MV51, Laura. So as you can see, that third option, the MV51, is actually what is in front of Laura <laughs> right now. Um, yes. And then for an additional trivia, um, what is in front of Justin is the actual original 51 model that that mic was modeled after um, stylistically. So just interesting trivia there. All right. We've got almost 70 percent. So I'm going to go ahead and close the poll and show you guys the results. So as you can see, um, early on, it was just MV88 Plus or MV88, and I don't own a Motive product, but the MV5 and 51 sort of crept up there at the end. So it looks like nice. most people are using the 88 and the 88 Plus, or they don't have it yet. So hopefully this will be illuminating to you on how you can kind of unlock those. And if you don't own a Motive product, it might maybe help you select if you want to purchase one in the future. All right. So I'm going to hide those results, and I'm going to kick it back over to Laura and Justin. Take it away, guys. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Well, first of all, thank you for being here. And that's very helpful to know that almost half or over half of you don't have a Motive product yet. So this will hopefully be uh, pretty eye-opening for you. So you can learn about some basics about the microphones themselves um, and then also how to use our Motive microphones in live streaming and recording. Um, just a quick bit about who we are. I'm Laura Davidson. I work in market development um, on our retail team. And Justin, tell the people what you do because it's Pretty exciting and fun. Yes, I'm in the applications engineering departments. We kind of run the product tech support. We can help you choose and use your sure products. Uh, we do a lot of troubleshooting, system design, just about everything. So, yeah, um, he knows all the things. Is what it comes down to, really. So, he's the one. Look up a lot <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't sell yourself short. Um, so, we also have another quick poll to do before I dive into the agenda. So, we want to know a lot about what you guys are into. So, Cheryl, when, why don't we put up the next poll? And if you do currently have Motive products, how are you using it? Because we want to know how we can best answer your questions. And while you're thinking about that and answering that, I'll just kind of walk you through what we're going to be talking about today. Um, and just real quick, um, our agenda 
is to go over how you can understand the basics of microphone concepts and audio concepts as well. Justin's going to walk us through a little bit of that. Um, and then we're going to focus on how to get the best sound from your Motive mic. And then that we'll talk a little bit about how to share your audio files. So even if you don't have the Motive products, we can still get you a little bit up to speed on what these microphones are actually meant to capture and how they can make your life much easier. Um, so then we'll, we'll go into that how world. So Cheryl, what, uh, what do we have so far? Is it rolling in? It's Being rolling in. I think we're, we're just in the 40% right now. I think once we hit 50, I'll, 50%, I'll close that poll. So everybody get your votes in. Fantastic. I'll just give it a few Fantastic. more moments. And I think yeah, we... so for those of you who don't have the mode of mics, you can also look, kind of let us know in your questions, um, you know, kind of what you want to know a little bit more about if you're thinking about getting one, what we can answer there. But hopefully by the end of this, you're going to be very familiar with all of these products and, and how they can make going live and recording that much easier or just doing things like this conference calls, webinars. Um, it sounds pretty darn good and it's super simple to use. Great. All right. So next, so we do have about over 50% of the of the numbers in. So I'm going to close the poll and share the results here. So as we're seeing, it's kind of kind of an even split. Mostly it's skewing towards recording music and other, but it looks like everybody's kind of using it for all sorts of different things. Fantastic. Great. I can't I want to hear about other. What's the other? <laughs> Tell us what the other is. All righty. So I'll Fantastic. Hide and we'll get back to the presentation. Great. So Justin's going to kick us off first, and he's going to tell us a little bit about uh, the audio frequency spectrum and even more. So go for it, Justin. Great. Uh, so yeah, we're talking about capturing sound. Of course, sound is what you know. We we uh, the human ear is sensitive to vibrations in the air, twenty to twenty thousand hertz, or vibrations per second. So the lowest sounds we can hear, twenty hertz, twenty vibrations per second, and then. Uh, as we get older, we lose the high frequency hearing, but 20,000 hertz is generally the highest people can hear. Um, for lower frequencies, you can think about, you know, a, a bass drum, low organ notes, the explosions in movies, you know, things that you would hear through a subwoofer maybe. Uh, mid frequencies, that covers a lot of instruments, speech, vocals, etc. High frequencies, think of things like a dentist's drill, maybe a mosquito buzzing <laughs> close to your ear or something like that. The symbols, the uh, reverb and effects that you might hear in recordings. And so uh, the graph that you're seeing on the screen at the left, you've got 20 hertz. And at the top, you've got 20,000 hertz. And uh, actually what you're seeing graphed on there is the response pattern of a microphone. You see that the microphone is sensitive to those mid-range frequencies. It kind of rolls off toward the left at the low end. And then there's a couple of spots there toward the high end where there's uh, a bit of a, a bump or a bit of a peak there. Um, on the slide here, I've got something where it says the human voice range. This is pretty general, but you know, 100 to 6,000 hertz maybe. Uh, the next slide actually has some more specifics on this, but um, the frequencies that have to do with the intelligibility of the voice are about 1,000 to 2,000 hertz in general. So that's just something we'll keep in mind. As far as microphone frequency response goes, a lot of the motive mics we're talking about today are condenser mics. Condenser mics are good at capturing this entire spectrum, whereas dynamic mics, as you see on the graph here, they're a little bit more um, tailored frequency response. So a dynamic mic like an SM58 is you know, kind of uh, um, best at picking up vocal frequencies, mid-range frequencies. You, know, you might wanna use a condenser mic to make a room recording. Um, on the next slide, uh, we've actually got a range of some of the instruments. And this is also pretty general. I mean, if you look at the soprano, um, you know, the, the range there, it says from uh, 260 hertz up to 1,000 or so in general, but extending all the way up past 8,000 hertz. So, I mean, it's a pretty wide range for voice. And all of these instruments, uh, I think we're kind of seeing the primary range, but, um, you know, there's certainly something going on for bass guitar above 500 hertz. And I don't have to get too much into the uh, finer points about this, but just wanted to give you an idea of the audio spectrum in general and where these instruments and where these different sounds fit along that. Um, we could also talk about the pickup pattern of a microphone. Uh, microphones can be omnidirectional or unidirectional. I guess there's also bidirectional, which I didn't include here, but this uh, is the uh, area of the microphone that's sensitive to sound. And you have sort of a 3D representation here of a directional microphone where we can see that from the back of the mic, there's really no sound pickup. And also 
Um, at the top right, you can see sort of a graph. Um, the, the directional microphone, if you put this on a chart, it kind of starts looking like a heart. So we get the name, the cardioid pickup pattern. Um, so from the front of the mic at zero degrees, and this is also, you can see, let me hold this in front of the camera here. This is at the 12 o'clock position on the mic. And then as we go around to the back of the mic, there's little or no pickup. Um, you can see there at 12 o'clock, zero degrees, that's where we have the most pickup. And that's pretty consistent around the front of the mic. And then here at 60 degrees, so sort of the 10 o'clock and two o'clock positions here, we have a three dB decrease in the sound pickup. And dB we're just using to compare two values um, without really getting into much more of that. But three dB change represents a noticeable but small difference in the sound pickup. But then if you compare that to this, this 90 degree um, position, we're down six dB. So that's a pretty significant decrease when you go from the front of the mic to the sides of the mic here. And as you continue around the back of the mic, we're down 10 dB at 120 degrees. That's the uh, eight o'clock and four o'clock positions. That actually would be perceived as half as loud as from the front. So if I'm using a directional mic, I don't wanna talk into the back of it. I'd like to talk into the mm -hmm. front of it for the best sound pickup. Um, the advantage of this is that you know, if you do have environmental or ambient sounds, while you're trying to make a recording or do a podcast or whatever, you know, your kids are running around in the background, your dog is making noise, there's traffic outside, you can use the directional pattern of the mic to your advantage. Um, you know, be close to the mic. That's something we're going to keep, uh, you know, reiterating through this webinar is that you need to be close to the mic and you can use the directional pattern to reject unwanted sounds. Uh, something else I should point out is that microphones are passive. They don't reach out and grab sound. They only measure the sound that arrives at the mic. So uh, for the best results, you do want to be close to the mic. It's not going, you know, if it's going to amplify any sound, it's amplifying all of the sounds. So this gets back to that intelligibility and you know keeping the mic close to the source. Definitely. And so that's kind of the the basic overview of how the microphone works. And, and it's a very top level overview, but we just wanted to kind of give you guys an, an idea of how the microphone picks you up, what to take into consideration when you are placing your mic. But we also want to talk about some of the solutions that we specifically make. So I want to take you into the, the family and introduce you to some of my favorite uh, products that we make. And these are the Motive line of USB microphones. Um, there are six in the series. And um, I just wanted to walk you through them a little bit, and then we're going to go through some kind of application and setup ideas for you as well. Um, so to just kind of tee things up, that first one that you see is the MV5. It's a condenser mic, and that's that black and red one that you see in the picture. A um, few things that you notice off the bat is that it's meant to be used on a desktop because it comes with that nice stand. You can also screw it into a threaded microphone stand or um, the video kit, that Manfrotto Pixie tripod that's down here on the bottom right. You can screw it into that as well if you want it to be a little bit more mobile for field recording applications. Um, it also has some presets, some DSP presets built in and headphone monitoring. All of these that you're looking at are USB mics with the exception of the MVL, um, which I'll tell you about in a second. But you can see that you can plug in right directly into your devices or your computer um, using any of these, these solutions. So the MV5 is going to be really great for podcasting, um, for conferencing, for recording music, just because it can have that nice proximity to the source. Um, the next one over is the one I'm using, which is our MV51. This is a large diaphragm condenser microphone. And what you'll notice about this microphone here is that it has some great control panel features, which we'll get into a little bit more in depth on another slide. But essentially, you can control the microphone from the mic itself, which is very handy if you need to mute quickly, if you need to boost your gain or turn up your headphones. Um, and it also on the back has that nice headphone out as well. Now I have it using a desktop stand here, or a boom arm stand, but you can also put it directly on your desktop. So there's a lot of different applications for this as well. You can set it right in front of you, plug into your computer, have great sounding uh, voiceovers, uh, great sounding just audio. Um, you can also put it onto a microphone stand, set it in the middle of the room if you wanna get kind of a, an ambient sound, like if you had a trio that you wanted to record, um, or yourself and your guitar, maybe you can set it on the table in front of you. The next one that I want to tell you about is our MV88, which is this cute little guy. Uh, and it goes onto um, your iOS devices via a lightning connector. You can see it right here, it plugs directly in. And it's a stereo condenser mic. 
So what that lets you do using our apps, our Motive audio and video apps, you can change the polar pattern of the microphone from stereo to monocardioid, mono bidirectional, and raw mid-side. So that's a really key feature of both the 88 and the 88 plus. And why that's useful is if you want to use it for multiple applications, it's kind of like having a Swiss army knife in your pocket because you can record things in stereo, which captures a nice stereo image, um, or you can tighten up the pattern. And what Justin was talking about with that cardioid pattern, you want to have that rejection from the rear of the mic and have a tighter, um, more focused pattern on the source directly in front of it. That's what that's useful for. Uh, but the excuse me, the mono bidirectional polar pattern is great if you want to do an interview because it will open up both sides of that stereo mic and have you on one side and your source on the other. So really great microphone <clears throat> for field recording, for podcasting, for mobile journalism, for capturing your kids' soccer games, recitals, all those fun things. It plugs directly onto your phone. Uh, and the one next to it, the 88 Plus, is kind of the next step up, which is a kit that comes with the microphone, the shoe mount, the phone clamp, the Manfrotto pixie tripod stand, and cables that wrap up into this cool little neoprene sleeve so you can take it with you. So that one, a little more versatile and also has a headphone monitor out on the back. Um, the MVL is the lavalier mic. You can see this little guy that's great for interviews, clips under your shirt, plugs into the headphone jack of your phone, um, and lets you have great sounding audio um, for doing interviews or just doing a quick vlog. And the MVI, which is our interface, <clears throat> which is this guy here. I just have it on my desk so I can show you. Single channel interface has an XLR in as well as a high Z in. So if you wanted to record an instrument or um, your voice, if you already have a microphone, this is a really great tool because you would plug this in and then it lets you get it directly into your phone or your computer via USB. And it also has that headphone monitor out on the back and you can easily control it from the front of the unit. So. That's kind of the the quick run through of of the entire family. Justin, did I did I miss any family members, or did we no, get everybody? Covers it. Yeah, um, <laughs> I would say uh, I would just point out too the MVL is great. You know, like you said, for recording, you know, some quick voice notes, an interview, maybe. Uh, I wanted to stress it's not a phone headset. Um, that's just for recording only. And Correct. Yes. The uh, MV88 Plus adds a headphone output to the uh, original MV88, which is useful if you're, you know, say you're recording tracks and listening back to it, or if you just wanted to monitor the sound that's coming into the mic, because that's kind of a handy feature that um, you know, we no longer can rely on the uh, headphone jack on a smartphone in a lot of cases. So mm -hmm. um, MV88 adds that feature. Yeah, it's also nice, especially um, in live streaming applications for a number of these that have the headphone on the back. It's just that much easier to know what your levels are going into the game as opposed to trying to fix something in post. Um, you have that ability to hear yourself in real time. So it's the real game changer and a lifesaver in a number of different ways. But also just right now doing this webinar, being able to talk and hear myself via the same device is, is very, very easy and makes my life much easier. Um, cool. All right. So that's that's the Motive family. Hopefully you're familiar with them now. Those of you who already have your favorite, maybe there's another favorite that you want to consider bringing into the mix. Um, but did, did you have something to add, Justin? I heard you. Well, I was I just thought. going to say that we'll be talking a little bit more about these features as we go on. So yes, exactly. More, more on that later. So now that you know kind of the tools for the toolbox, we we wanted to tell you a little bit about what to consider when you wanna get started. So whether you're gonna be recording or going live um, or you know, having a call like this, you wanna make sure that you take some things into consideration. So the first thing to talk about is your AVL or your audio, video, and lighting. Can people hear you? Can they see you? And is it well lit enough? Right now I'm using a very fancy light source called the sun to light myself for this e event, but you can use any number of things uh, you don't have to buy a big light kit. You don't have to get super fancy. Just find a light source that doesn't throw too many shadows and brightens you up so that you're working with your onboard camera as opposed to against it. Um, video, we're pretty lucky these days. We have you know HD cameras in our back pockets or on our MacBooks. So that's kind of taken care of. But the audio is a, is a very important feature that we want to make sure everybody knows to, to take into consideration because we've done a lot of studies at Shure and we found that people can hang if your video is kind of okay, but if your audio is not where it needs to be, they will bounce quicker than you can say, 
Sure. So um, you definitely want to take that into consideration first and foremost. That's why it's the first letter in that acronym. Um, next thing to, to consider is to remove barriers. And what I mean by that is to make sure that you have everything ready so that when inspiration strikes, you can hit go. You can go live, you can record without having to find all those cables, get a stand, you know, get a nice comfy space that's going to be your creative space or your broadcast space and just make it yours. So right now I'm, I'm in a room that is a playroom. It's uh, my office, it's my studio, it's my exercise room. But I know that no matter what, if I am ready to go, I can I can record and have that good light source, even when it's cloudy like it is today. Um, next thing to take into consideration is to plan it out. So this is more for people who are wanting to be uh, on the creative path as far as like a podcast or a live stream. If you're going to be doing something that's um, serial, you want to make sure you have a plan. So can you talk about that recipe, you know, 17 times across 17 episodes? What are you going to be able to talk about that people are going to want to come back and listen to? So just plan it out. And there's a ton of templates online that you can use. Another great resource is Think Media, um, an influencer named Sean Cannell. He's a great friend of Shores, and he has some tremendous tools that you can use to really up your game as far as how to plan your content, how to distribute it, how to look great while you're doing it. So just plan it out and make sure that you have enough to say over and over again to, to people to keep them coming back. And last but not least is to test it and make sure that your audio is solid. A lot of people kind of forget about this step, but if you're going to be going live, it never hurts. And it's really important actually to do a live stream test. So maybe don't do it five minutes before you're going to go live. Do it late at night when nobody's there and ask a buddy to just watch and make sure you sound okay. Uh, but just make sure your levels are good. Make sure your mic place, placement is good and solid. Make sure they can see you. Make sure it's well lit. That way, you know that when you go live, you can really focus on what you're trying to say uh, and answering those comments as they're coming in and not worrying about, can they hear me? So. Those just, are just some quick, quick tips. I just yeah, wanted sure, to add a side note here. I'll, you can, I'll let you see me. I just wanted to add a side note really quick <laughs> about that rehearsal, especially if you're doing like a Facebook live. Um, a really nice thing that you can do on Facebook is when you get ready to do your stream, you can select that you're only going to stream that to yourself. Um, so then yes. you can select the only me, do your live stream test, and then be able to check it yourself without anybody seeing, seeing it. So that's another way of, of handling it. Very key. And then number four on this slide. I don't trust myself. Yeah. Yeah, so I, have, I, have to, I have to phone a friend. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, Justin. Yeah, well, just that number four. I mean, just, you know, we can stress that one again. That's really important to do an audio level test. Um, in the picture on this slide, you can kind of make out at the, at the left-hand side of the screen, there's an audio meter, and that's in the Motive video app. Um, you don't get that in the, like, the iPhone camera app, for example. But you can use the Motive app, the, the audio version of it, to test your audio beforehand. Uh, we'll spend a little bit more time on that in the next couple of slides. But uh, that's just really, really important. Make sure that you're not overloading the mic or you're not having the levels set too low and you're barely picking up any sound. And um, yeah, once you've got it all set the way you want, you can switch over to your other app. It's also worth pointing out at this time that... Uh, you know, a lot of apps will support the use of a USB microphone, like these Motive mics. Some apps, you know, they'll put out a new version and then the support goes away or, you know, something breaks. So um, we are at the mercy sometimes of the apps that we're using and also the platform, you know, whether you're iOS, you're Android, you're on a computer. Um, so th there is kind of a unknown there. But in general, we can set these up, get good sound, and then we can get ready to stream or ready to record. Mm-hmm. And that's also, that just reminded me too, in the barriers section and removing the barriers, also make sure to mute your kids and your dogs before going, oh, well, okay, don't mute them. But, you know, make your family or whoever's going to be in the same physical space as you aware that you're going live because that's, you know, we've all seen the BBC video where the baby comes in and, you know, and I'm on these calls all day and my daughter comes in regularly. So, you know, just make sure everybody knows that. It's live time, so maybe don't come in and, and put the dog out or whatever. So things to take into consideration that we often forget. What does your background look like? And hopefully remove the background noise before it can happen. Um, but Justin, that was kind of a nice segue, your gain segue into getting the mic situated and set up. So do you want to touch on this one a little bit? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see here. 
Because there's a, we've got a, a couple slides later. We've got an actual picture of how you set the gain in the Motive app. Um, That's right. Uh, but at this point, you know, gain. We're just talking about amplifications, which is kind of a fancy word in the uh, audio jargon. You know, say amplification or level necessarily. It's just the gain. Um, you know, again, position the mic for the best pickup. So if it's a desktop mic, you know, it's not four feet away from you or something like that. You want it to be close to your voice uh, and pick up your voice and not the room sound necessarily. Microphone gain, you know, again, you want to go into the audio app, look at the meter, make sure that you're getting good levels. Um, the app actually has a section. It's shaded in gray. It's from minus 12 to minus 6 dB. And uh, zero, of course, is the highest level you can record. Uh, you want to avoid hitting that. Um, you, you know, at the loudest um, sound levels, but you can set it in kind of that sweet spot and get a pretty good, um, you know, pickup of, of your source. Step three here, it says choose the DSP or digital signal processing. And on the Motive mics, um, the MV5 just has three of these, but the other ones have five different signal processing presets for speech, music, instrument, loud and flat. And these give you kind of a preliminary setting. So uh, for example, if you set it to the loud or the live band mode, it gives you a very low gain setting because it's expecting that you have a very loud source. It's your band rehearsal or your, your rock show or whatever. On the other hand, if you set it to speech, you're gonna get a very high gain setting. I think 33 dB, almost all the way up to the maximum 36. And that's assuming you're just you know, talking at a normal conversation level. So you will need to increase the gain for that. The other thing that the DSP settings do, they make some minor EQ adjustments. So for speech, we kind of roll off the uh, low frequencies because we're not really concerned as much with picking up you know, a lot of bass from um, from the voice. As I mentioned before, that intelligibility we're looking for is in the you know kind of the one to two kilohertz range, one to three kilohertz, somewhere around there. So some minor EQ adjustments happen in the background. And if you want to go beyond that, you can also uh, use there's there's a usable uh, user selectable five band EQ. You know if you want to brighten up the sound a little bit. Uh, if you're using the MV88 models, this is only accessible in the Motive app, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, something else too that um, you know this is I guess concerning live streaming versus recording. You know if this is anything that you're going to go back and edit later. What we would recommend is using the flat setting. You know, so you, you set it at flat, that just means you're not increasing or decreasing any particular frequencies. Uh, of course, once you do select flat, you also wanna check your levels and make sure that the, the gain is set correctly. And then later mm -hmm. on, you're not stuck with some decision that you know it's sounding too bassy, you're too bright or something like that. And just for some kind of visual context for those of you who are visual learners, like I am, Let's see if I can do this. Okay, so this is that flat one that Justin was talking about and speech, music, instrument, and loud. And these are in the app, but also right on the front of the MVI and the MV51. So if you wanted to play along at home, you can also put in the uh, the question section too, what's your favorite DSP preset? That could be kind of fun. An impromptu sure. poll. Yeah, just, I wanna know to, what uh... you like to use. Just to point it out, my uh, my 51 Sonodyne here is plugged into an MVI. I have it set to, actually it's set to flat mode. I thought it was on speech, but um, <laughs> that's I'm okay. Right now, because I already had a good level set before we started yes. the webinar. <laughs> exactly. My KSM8 is plugged into an MV50, MVI as well, and I am on the speech mode, if Excellent. anybody there wants you to know. <laughs> and I'm on speech mode on my MV51. But this this guy, the MVI, is, is kind of my favorite. I'm not going to lie. This is my favorite in, in the line because you can use it with so many amazing microphones. If you already have one, if you have a condenser mic and you need to put some phantom power on, this bad boy will do that too. So this is uh, my favorite. A really good segue into the next slide. Yes, exactly. Um, Speaking of MVI. Yeah, because we did mention that the uh, MV5, the MV51, those are best used as desktop mics if you're doing speech applications. I mean, sure, you can use it to record a concert or a live band rehearsal as well. But um, what if you're doing uh, fitness instruction or what if you're instructing a class or doing something where, you know, you don't want you don't to be too tight on the camera shot. You need to be able to see the room or see the area. So now you really have no choice but to be, you know, five or six feet or more away from the mic. And what do you do in that situation? So using the MVI, um, you know, kind of in the middle here, I've got a picture of the MVI with a wireless system. There's a transmitter pack and a lavalier mic. So at that point, I can clip a mic onto my collar. I could use a head-worn mic. 
and then I can move around freely and um, plug the wireless receiver's output into the MVI. So uh, it involves some more equipment, but that's a really effective solution for somebody who you know does need to be moving around or you know can't stay right in front of the mic the entire time. And then on the bottom of the screen, uh, if you can make this out, there's a uh, it's it's actually the Shure SCM268 mixer. Got a couple of SM58 microphones on desktop stands. And uh, what I'm doing here is combining the two microphones with the mixer and plugging the mixer's output into the MVI. Uh, this would be a great application if you had, you know, a panel discussion with two or more talkers. Um, you know, if we can go back to the fitness instruction example, maybe you've got an iPod or a music player that you wanted to plug in and, and, uh, and play music along with uh, your, your voice. And the mixer could give you control over the, each of those levels. Um, so that's another kind of a versatile way of getting multiple inputs. And um, then you can get, you know, maybe three or four talkers close to their microphones and get really good sound pickup, really good intelligibility. Mm -hmm. And then get it directly into your live streaming platform of choice. There you go. That's, that's what I've been doing. I do some live streams on Facebook and I plug in a mic into a mixer and my keyboard into a mixer and my guitar into a mixer. And then I sum it to the MVI and get the Facebook Live. So it's been a, a game changer for sure. Great. Um, then we have another picture here showing, you know, again, the MV5, the MV51 used in front of a desk. Um, you know, both of these have integrated desk stands. Uh, the MV5, you can remove it from the desk stand and put it on a standard camera tripod, or the MV51 will fit on a standard microphone stand. But they work great right in front of you on the desk, and they're pretty portable and easy to carry around, and you just plug it in with a USB cable. So uh, obviously a lot simpler than having uh, you know, another mic, a mic stand, mic cables, a mixer, um, et cetera, et cetera. You know, a lot more to set up, but as long as you've got the time and the ability to uh, you know, test it beforehand, you know, all of these are pretty effective solutions. Definitely. All right, so those are the microphones, and we just wanted to dive a little bit into some application ideas there. Uh, then we want to get back a little bit to the sound quality and, and what to look for and what to keep in mind. So Justin's going to walk us through some of the terminology. And then we have some audio examples to listen to. So if you haven't put headphones on yet, now would be a great time to do it so you can hear his uh, test one, two audio examples That's in right. a second. Yeah. <laughs> and on this slide, we have sort of a screenshot from the Motive app. You can see the stereo width at the bottom, which pertains to the MV88 models. Uh, it actually will let you save user presets if you have the mic plugged in. Um, and then more toward the top of the screen, you can see the five different DSP modes. And then finally, the slider for mic gain. And then the little slider right next to that controls the monitor output. You know, if you were using this, let's say for uh, GarageBand or Logic or something like that, put down a guitar track, play it back and sing over it, then you can control how much playback you're hearing. Um, but here we have uh, gain all the way up at 36 dB. And just revisiting that, you know, this would be appropriate for normal conversation levels, maybe. Um, you know, if it gets too loud, you can back it down from there. But once you start, um, you know, doing this for your live band, you probably want to turn that down something more like 18 or below. And, you know, just look at the meters in the app and make sure you're not overloading it. Um, I do have some sound samples and we'll get to those in a second. I also have some pictures of uh, basically what the waveform looks like once you record. So if we think about those vibrations in the air that we perceive as sound, if you've ever seen those before on a computer screen, it kind of looks like a, uh, it's a waveform. You know, it's a complex waveform. Um, what I did here, and we didn't really have time to get into these recorded samples today, but uh, I made a recording of an acoustic guitar uh, 12 inches away. And on purpose, I set the gain too low at 12 <laughs> dB in the Motive app. And uh, what I ended up with, it looks pretty flat. I mean, everything looks about the same level, the loud sounds, the quiet sounds, they're all pretty small there, as you can see. Um, now, if you were recording this and then going back later, you could always amplify it or normalize it, bring everything up to the maximum level. But the problem is whatever noise you've picked up, whatever room sound you've picked up is also getting amplified at that point. So that's something you wanna watch out for. Um, this is also mm -hmm. where you, know, you record a YouTube video or stream something and people are having trouble hearing your voice they could turn their speakers up, turn their headphones up, but now they're just hearing a bunch of hiss and a bunch of noise <laughs> from your room. So um, you know, this is an example of gain set too low. Uh, the next example, visually, now we have the gain set too high. So uh, same mic distance, same acoustic guitar, and I played something. And I, on purpose, I set the gain all the way up to 36, the maximum. It's too high. 
And if you look at the left-hand side of this waveform on the top, um, you can kind of make it out where the, uh, it almost looks like a square, you know, it's just flat along the top of it. There's no change in dynamics there. And then where you see the mouse pointer right now is sort of a close-up or zoomed in waveform. Uh, you can literally see that, you know, it reached its maximum and there's nowhere else for it to go. And we call that clipping. It's actually clipping the tops of the waveform uh, because, you know, you've reached the maximum. Um, this one actually didn't end up sounding too bad. It sounded a little hot and a little crispy, but, you know, if you were to record your live band and you had the gain set too high, I mean, the entire thing would probably be distorted. Um, and there's really no way to recover from that either. I mean, even in editing mm -hmm. software, you can, you can lower the volume, but the uh, audio waveform has been destroyed. Um, the next slide has the gain set just right. Uh, again, same mic distance. And then I finally, you know, looking at the meter, I arrived at 28 dB for the gain setting in the app. And then here you can see, you know, there's some dynamic changes. You can kind of see the peaks where, um, you know, this is where I was uh, uh, striking the chord to begin with. And you can kind of see how it, it tapers off from there. So it's sort of a natural waveform. You get the, uh, you know, all the dynamics are intact. Um, I actually intended to uh, then play an audio sample moving away from the mic to, the, to a 36 inch distance at the same gain setting, kind of hear the difference in the pickup. Um, but we have some vocal samples that'll demonstrate that here in a minute too. Um, I made a couple recordings of me saying, testing one, two, three. And along the top here, you can see that entire phrase, testing one, two, three. And then on the lower half of the screen, it's just the number three um, kind of zoomed in. So let's listen to that a couple of times. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Did you hear that? <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> it's so fun. Okay. So, um, Moving on from that, um, and I can explain what's going on in the next slide. Um, same sample, basically, and uh, I recorded it four times. The first two examples you'll hear are in a large reverberant room with a lot of echo, and I started 36 inches away from the mic. Um, the second sample, I moved closer, I'm 12 inches from the mic, and that difference represents, uh, it's about a 9 dB change in the audio level. So um, it's like being twice as loud, basically. So I, I left the uh, gain setting, the level setting, the same for all four of these examples. I just changed the environment and I changed the distance to the mic. So the first thing you'll hear is, um, you know, 36 inches away from the mic in a large echoey room. And then I get closer to 12 inches and you'll hear an improvement in the sound, I think. And then I repeated the same example in a quiet room with some acoustic treatments. And that's also the 36 inch distance and finally, the 12 inch distance, which is what you actually just heard in the first sample. So we'll kind of go um, from bad, you know, from worst to best here. <laughs> so, All right. So again, uh, here we go. Room. Yeah, here we go. Third. Yeah, here's our echoey 36 inches away. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Okay. And now this one is going to be 12 inches reverberant room, 12 inches away. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Okay. Now we're going to hear 36 inches away in a quiet room. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. And finally, our best 12 inches away in a quiet room or a controlled environment. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Did y'all get that? I hope you heard those. <laughs> that yeah, hopefully funny. that translates over, you know, the, the uh, internet and, you know, this uh, webcast software. You know, this is another thing to consider is that, you know, no matter how great your audio sounds in your monitors or if you make a recording of it, you know, you, you are at the mercy of bandwidth and things like that. So you might have an app that, uh, or let's say even a, uh, you know, an internet or IP phone, voice over IP, where we're not making a recording of a, you know, live performance, we're only capturing the speech. So a lot of times those things are limited as far as the bandwidth. So um, mm -hmm. that said, I think there's a pretty clear difference between the first example, you know, in a large room, too far away from the mic, 
versus, um, you know, example number four, close to the mic, a quiet room. And uh, I mean, you could think about that if you've ever been on a conference call and somebody's on speakerphone, they're standing clear across the room and you can barely hear what they're saying. Uh, the mic is picking up their voice, but it's also picking up a lot of reflected sound and everything else from the room. So, you know, again, we want to be mm -hmm. close to the source with the microphone and that gives us the best sound quality. Cool. Cheryl, was there anybody who needed to hear anything again or think we can move forward? Because I can't see any comments. Actually, yeah. If you wouldn't mind playing through those one more time, I think we had somebody that was dialed in on phone and wasn't hearing him, so he was switching to the computer. So, gotcha. All right, we'll do one through four again. Here we go. Okay. Testing one two three. Testing one two three. Three. That was far away. Near far. <laughs> okay, here we go. Testing one two three. Testing, one, two, three. Okay, that was the 12 inches in a reverberant room. Here's 36 inches, quiet room. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. three. I love the visual aids, Justin, right now. It's making my life. All right, and then this one is the ideal scenario. Quiet room, 12 inches. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. three. All right. And then we have that one works. more request to play. Oh, so we have we have a request to play the worst and the best back oh. to back. Okay, here we go. Here's the worst. The far away reverberant room. Audio example one. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. three. Okay, and now... Close up, quiet room. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. That's pretty darn compelling, if you ask me. <laughs> yeah, and I could, I could point out again, the only thing that changed there was the environment and the distance to the mic. Um, mm -hmm. You know, those were all, uh, actually, if anyone's interested, those were recorded with an MV88+, plus, and I think the gain setting was 28.5 dB at the flat setting. But... Um, yeah, it makes that's a pretty important. big difference if you're close. Go ahead. And well, that makes that speaks to what you said earlier too, where the mic is not going to reach out and grab the sound. That's a really yeah. important thing that I think a lot of people forget. Uh, and and you have to work with the mic and not make it work against you. So that's a very cool example. All right. So that's some audio examples. So we talked about where you need to be when you're using mic, how your environment should be set up. Um, we wanted to tell you a little bit about the apps that we have, the mode of app, um, audio and video apps. They're both free and available in the app stores. Um, and they're very useful for controlling the microphones. As Justin mentioned with the MV88 and MV88 Plus, you can change up the polar pattern. Um, you are also able to change EQ, compression, um, and use those DSP presets and select those, create your own DSP presets and save them. Uh, but also within the app, you can do some recording, obviously. That would be a missing piece if we didn't have that. So when you want to start recording your audio, this is the um, what the audio app looks like. And it's a very intuitive interface. So basically, if you want to start recording, open it up and hit the record button. But set if your you levels had... first. <laughs> oh, exactly. That's right. Sorry, my bad. Not even listening to my own advice. Uh, you can also, if you wanted to configure your microphone, um, you can tap, tap this uh, settings button here to change up the polar pattern if you're using the 88 or 88 plus, or if you wanted to change EQ or select those DSP presets, you can do that using this little guy here. So make sure your gain is where you need it to be. You can control that here. And then you would just hit record. When you're finished, you would tap the check mark, and then here you have the opportunity to save your recording and call it whatever you want. So if you tap in this field here, you can delete it, um, delete the text and name it whatever you want and click save. Just make sure you do that because otherwise you won't capture the recording and then you'll be very sad and start calling Justin saying, where did my recordings go? Uh, so make sure that you store it. It will store it within the app itself. Um, but then also once you have recorded it, you have some light editing that you can do right within our apps. So in order to do that, you would select the file that you want to edit and tap the scissor icon, it's this guy down here. And then that will open up this window here. And you can decide if you want to trim or split the file. 
Um, and you can easily do that. If you trim it, you can just drag these little guys in here. If you wanted to do a fade, you could do that as well. And then you would just click save and it saves your file. So that's really handy if you want to just record something very quick and send it off to somebody. I do that quite often actually, and, and just make a quick recording, trim it. You don't have to go into your DAW and then send it and export it. And there's a number of different ways to do that, which we're gonna talk about right here. So sharing via, via our apps is also simple. So in order to do that, you would tap the My Recordings icon, which is the little guy that um, looks like a little waveform that Justin was talking about. Uh, and then you would tap the three dots in the corner and share, and then choose where you want to share it to. And you can email it, you can save it to your favorite app, um, you can airdrop it. So there's a number of different choices there as far as getting it out into the world using our app. Um, there's also ways to save it to your desktop and export your audio, which Justin is going to tell you all about. That's right. Yeah. Um, and earlier there was a slide that we were, you know, we were talking about the Motive apps and um, there was a detail listed there. It said that the apps record an uncompressed audio format, which is like a wave of format, you know, basically the same thing as CD audio. Um, those tend to be pretty large files. So uh, <laughs> it might not be the easiest thing. It might not be the thing you want to text to your friends or send in an email. You, know, you might just get an undeliverable message back because the file is too large. So one thing that you can do within the app, as Laura was just mentioning, you can convert it to different formats. So you can go to uh, Apple Lossless or an AAC. That's the MP4 file format. Um, and that'll make a much smaller and more manageable file. You can use, like, again, if you're going to email it or text it to somebody, or if you want to upload it to your cloud storage and not have to wait, you know, 45 minutes for it to upload. Um, my favorite method actually has to do with using iTunes. And the screenshots here, um, you know, are a few different uh, operations you can do there. You would, you'd actually, uh, you know, need a PC or a Mac computer for this. You load up iTunes and plug in your device. This is on an iOS device, of course. Um, the, the top picture here, you can point to the, uh, the uh, device itself, and then you'll get to a menu. Um, you know, this is also where you would back up your device or load up music on it, pictures and whatnot. But there's an option here for file sharing. And once you do that, you can select the Motive Audio app. And that basically just lets you drag and drop. You, know, you can select a number of files and then just say, I want to save these to a folder on my desktop. And it's all done over a cable. So it's just a lot more reliable and uh, a lot quicker to do it that way. Android devices are similar. And this kind of depends on which device you're using. The interface might be a little bit different. But um, you'd have to go in and make a couple of settings and say that you want to use the USB connection to transfer files. And then I think on a Mac computer, you actually have to download a, a file transfer app but more or less, it's the same thing. You know, you just uh, plug it into your computer and you'll be able to access the files that are stored in the Motive app. And uh, that's a pretty uh, easy and reliable way of doing this, you know, other than being at the mercy of your Wi-Fi connection or your data connection. <laughs> um, yes, exactly. And there's also tutorial videos. I, these screenshots on the previous slide are actually grabbed from a tutorial video that we have on, on how to convert and how to share your audio. So there's, there's a full line of Motive audio videos and how to get those off your device, how to record um, on our YouTube channels. So in case you're lost and like, I missed all of that, we got you. We got you. Yeah. And there's some, you know, sometimes we get calls about, you know, people are recording, um, you know, voiceovers professionally or they're doing books on tape or they're doing an audition and, and you know, they require it to be in a certain file format. Um, so if you're limited by what's in the Motive app, you know, there are other um, software uh, packages out there, things like Audacity or Reaper that are free downloads. And, and beyond that, there's also ones that uh, you know, are much more full feature that you can pay for. And those will convert to whatever format you need. You know, if you need FLAC or an actual MP3 file or something like that, um, you know, that is a possibility. And that's one of the reasons that we only record into uh, the app in the WAV format. You know, you wouldn't want to record mm -hmm. the MP3 in a compressed format and then find out later that you need it to be uncompressed. It's another thing where <laughs> you can't recover the data that they throw out when they're compressing the audio file. So we start with the uncompressed, you know, full format and then you can uh, convert that to other formats to make it more portable if you want. Right. So that's kind of the, the rough overview of 
how to think about a microphone, how to approach a microphone, consider the application you're going to be using it for. Um, once you've selected your microphone, then consider the environment that you're going to be recording in and just prep that space, prep your content, make sure you know that you're ready to go live or to record or to make that call, uh, check that gain. Uh, and then you're ready, you're ready to get out there and start sharing your content with the world. Um, and if you need more resources, we have plenty um, at shore.com. There's YouTube videos, like I said, uh, and we're happy to help. Uh, but now we just want to, I just want to hear from you. I want to know what you want to know after us talking at you for 50 minutes. Let's, let's get into it. All righty. Um, we do have some questions, so I'll cue those up for you guys. Um, and then I just wanted to say, I think one of the things that a lot of the other people were mentioning were live streaming options and vlogging. So um, I know that was a question we had. So I think a lot of people use it for live streaming and vlogging, which we love to hear. Yay. All right. Uh, first question. Here we go. Um, this comes from a sure dealer. Um, I'm a sure dealer and currently it looks like stock is constrained on the mode of product line. Any news on when that might open up a bit more? Well, it's, it's a good problem to have and a frustrating problem to have. Uh, we are constantly getting new shipments in and we're doing our best to meet that demand. Uh, I, knew, I do know that it's constantly flowing into the channel, so we're doing our best. Um, but um, no, no official news from me. I'm just in marketing. <laughs> Just reach out. Please to reach your out rep. to your rep. <laughs> Please. Great. Next question. I currently use a Sure SM11 in the field. Would it benefit me to use a motive mod model either in a special situation or all of the time? I think Justin, that's a good use it? case for the MVI, where um, you know, your mm -hmm. SM11 probably does have a three-pin XLR on it, and that could plug into the MVI which is pretty portable. Um, I don't want to pull mine up right now because I might unplug it. But I'll be know, your there, there we are. I'm going to say it's about <laughs> the size of a computer mouse. Yeah. And um, there's even uh, ways, you know, you could um, come up with a uh, some sort of a carrier for it, some sort of a pouch for it and carry that along with you and plug it into your portable device. So, um, you know, it's pretty and versatile. And it is super durable too. It this is. Is, this is metal. It may look plastic, but... It's not. There you go. <laughs> and um, yeah, you should have plenty of gain available for the SM11 lavalier mic. So uh, yeah, I think that would be the motive product. Well, that's really the only motive product that would be compatible with that lavalier. Right. Yeah. Uh, next question. For monitoring of audio, what benefits do the SE215 Uni wired headphones have over basic Apple ones that come with a device? That's a great question. Um, first of all, so I'm using SE215s right now to monitor my audio conveniently. And so is Justin. I think I, I can't tell if you're 215s or what. And Cheryl as I'm, well. I'm using 535s. <laughs> oh, you fancy. She's fancy. I'm fancy. Um, I'm a vintage so guy. the advantage to using our earphones is that they're sound isolating. And what that does is basically it blocks out any external noise coming into your ear. So you're able to hear the source much more clearly. And it's also super comfy and they don't fall out and I'm never messing with them. So wraps around my ear, it's secure and uh, gives you that nice sound isolation. All right. We do get a question a lot about whether you can monitor over Bluetooth. We don't really recommend it because there's latency or delay in the Bluetooth. Um, you know, basically before you, you know, when you hit play, before you hear the music, there could be a quarter to a half a second of delay. And that's just the time it takes for Bluetooth to process the audio which is fine when you're listening to music, but uh, if you're trying to listen to something and you know, somebody's speaking in front of you and then you're hearing that voice a half a second later, it's pretty frustrating. So yeah, we like to stick to a wired connection for monitoring for that reason. Great. All right, next question. Regarding sort of um, audio settings and DSP, um, what would you do if a person has a really loud voice? We don't know anyone like that. No, no one. <laughs> We're not powerful singers in here. One of the uh, features in the Motive app, it's a compressor. Um, if you can kind of think back to those waveforms that you looked at on screen, you know, you had the, the beginning of the guitar note and then it would kind of taper off. And what a compressor will do is actually reduce the level of those peaks and bring everything a little closer together. So one thing you can do is put the compression on in your DSP settings. Um, some of the DSP modes do that automatically. They'll engage the light compression but you can go to a medium or a heavy compression. And it kind of brings the loudest sounds a little closer down to the level of the softer sounds. That, that would be one thing. Um, and, and that can be a problem because yeah, they start you know shouting or they start talking really loudly and you're close <laughs> to overloading and then they start to taper off and it's hard to hear them. So the compressor can help you sort that out. 
Great. Yes. Okay, next question. Um, so the NV88 Plus doesn't have an additional input. What would you suggest um, I use if I need to do live streaming from my iPhone, but I need to have more than one mic? Gotcha. So that would be, again, the MVI. And Justin has that awesome, well, I'll pull up that awesome slide again. Hold on a second. Talk through it, Justin, while I'm... <laughs> yeah, yeah just that, um, you know, you really kind of do have to have a mixer at that point that's going to combine multiple audio signals and then put the output of that mixer into the MVI. Kind of like you're seeing on the bottom here, I've got two SM58s plugged into the SCM268 mixer and then going into uh, the MVI. And... um. <laughs> There's a lot of other, Sorry. you know, there's a lot of mixers out there. Like you can get a four channel or a six channel mixer. If you go to your uh, audio dealer, they'll probably have a lot of different options. They all pretty much work the same. Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, there and might there, even be. There are USB mixers as well. If you want to use an interface that's a multiple channel interface or an actual mixer that has a USB connector that you can go directly into your computer, you can do that as well. But this it's, is this is our way of doing it, but I'm not also, the only way. I'm also going to interject too. Um, I think the... The first question you need to ask is, why do you need two microphones specifically? Um, and if you hmm. do have an MV88 Plus and you're not interested in, you know, or you, you can't up your up your system with a mix or anything like that, um, one of the cool things you can do if, if you're, like, dealing with a situation where, say, you're live streaming and you want to be able to pick audio up from the front and back, you can take an MV88 or an MV88 Plus you can put it in bi-directional mode and you can aim it mm -hmm. so that each of those side cartridges is facing the front and the back of the device you're recording from. And that way you'll be picking up audio both from who's behind the camera and who's in front of the camera and you'll be rejecting the audio from the sides of the camera. So that's sort of a more, yeah. you know, analog, uh, simple solution um, to be able to pick up more audio with an MV88 Plus or MV88. Right. Great. Definitely. All right. Next question. Can the MVI be used with an iPhone or with a phone? I should say, yes. it doesn't say iPhone specifically, it just says phone. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, it comes with a micro USB to lightning cable as well as a micro USB to USB, what is that, 2.0? Type A, yeah. yeah. Type A, the standard, the original, the OG <laughs> USB. <laughs> it's not even though, that's a that little square. Anyway, I digress. So yes, absolutely. That's what it is made for. I would qualify that real quickly by saying, you know, none of these mics um, typically can be used for phone calls or for FaceTime. So for communication, mm -hmm. uh, that's a limitation of the phone itself. You know, they don't typically let you use an external mic that's connected right. via USB. Uh, so that, that is one limitation. But a lot of the, um, you know, the streaming and conferencing um, software we're seeing now, you know, like Zoom has been, um, you know, gaining a lot of popularity lately. Um, that should work just fine on iOS and Android. Um, I think some other things like, uh, I know Facebook live at this time, unfortunately is not really compatible with Android, but, um, that's sort of, uh, you know, again, you kind of have to check with the, uh, manufacturer of the software, uh, for specifics on that, but yeah, you certainly can plug the MVI into an iPhone. Um, you could also use an on the go cable, so the micro USB, mm -hmm. um, to plug it into an Android device. I think that's a really good caveat, Justin, too, is that I think before you before you make the plunge, if you know specifically what you need your mic for and what app or, or device or product you're wanting to use it for, just do your due diligence because, you know, we don't want you to buy something that won't work. And, you know, we can't always guarantee that it'll work with a third party software if they don't they don't allow external microphones in the software. So. Right. Yeah, And we, we do try to keep a list of compatible devices on the website. It's just understandably pretty difficult to keep up with everything. New devices are coming out all the time. Um, new versions of software, new versions of firmware and operating systems are always coming out. So sometimes it takes a week or two for them to catch up. But in general, you can use it with a lot of different platforms, a lot of different software. Great. Mm -hmm. All right. Next question. The X2U isn't part of the Motive product line, but occupies a very similar space. How would its application slot in with the rest of the Motive products? It is very similar uh, to the the X2U kind of came first. I think it came out in about 2009 um, and it's an inline version of the USB solution. So almost like the MVI, uh, but it has an onboard volume control, um, onboard phantom power. I actually haven't played with one in forever, Justin. So if you have more yeah. that you can share. You could share. I'd say one of the big differences, I mean, the uh, yeah, the X2U doesn't have any kind of software interface. Um, I'm not sure that you'd be able to get it to work with a lot of portable devices, but if you've got, um, well, you could use it with a lot of Android portable devices if you have the right adapter cables. Mm -hmm. um, 
but there really isn't any driver or software interface for it. You typically would plug it into your computer, go to your sound settings and select, you know, Shure X2U as the input and the output device. Um, there's not much more to setting it up. And that only has an XLR input for microphones. Correct. Um, yes. And generally it's only compatible, you know, with mic level signals. So you know, it wouldn't be something that you can use directly with, you know, a guitar or a keyboard or something like that. But um, it's still, uh, you know, still relevant. You know, it's got some uh, controls right on it. Um, you've got the uh, LED out. that shows you the input level so you can make your yeah. settings that way. So uh, it's still a pretty handy device. And uh even comes with Velcro straps, put it on a mic stand. So, uh, but yeah, it's sort of an older generation of a USB um, interface that we still make. Great. Um, regarding the editing functions, um, those are just for the audio app, right? I couldn't find them in the video app. You can edit the audio. You can. Hmm. That's a good question, Cheryl. Yeah, can we edit the video? I can't remember. No, the, <laughs> oh, I'm uh, fired. The I gotta go. App just, <laughs> video app just saves it to the camera roll on an iPhone. Yeah. Yes, um, that's right. I would have to double check how that works on Android, sorry. But uh, at that point, you could go into iMovie or Final Cut or Premiere or something like right. that. And, and edit um, it and, that way. And, and that's actually one of the advantages of using the Motive video app is that it lets you choose your uh, resolution, your frame rate of both the audio and the video. Uh, we didn't get mm -hmm. into talking too much about sample rates or anything like that. But if you want to record uh, 4K, 60 frame per second video with full on wave audio, you're going to end up with really, really huge files, but that might be the best option if you're going to edit that further down the line. Yes. Yes. Okay. But this is, yeah, the video app is super handy. Like there I am. <laughs> <laughs> you can control a number of different options when you plug in your motive mic, but yeah, it's a great, great app. Okay. Next question. When it comes to editing, can you download the app to your laptop and edit the video there? not our motive video app unfortunately that is a mobile app only so like justin said you would want to record your video and then put it into your favorite video editing software of choice yep okay next question when using the mv51 in the field through an iphone is it possible to play music through the headphones while recording through the mic hmm. You, oh, I think, well, it, I think it depends. Yeah. Um, I think right. if you're doing something like with, say, GarageBand and you're playing back a track that way, then yes, yes. I'm pretty sure you can. Um, but in terms of like playing something through Spotify and hearing that, well, when, whenever you open up any recording app, the mic is going to take over. And so you won't be able to, you, I don't think you'll be able to listen to like an, I think it just depends on what you're trying to listen to and what you're trying to achieve. Yes. Right. That's something that I'm like a piece. Go ahead. Sir. No, I was just going to say, we'd need more info on that one to, yeah. to answer it. But um, I, I would say generally on a portable device, no, other than the example that Cheryl gave, you know, if you're listening to tracks on GarageBand and recording over it, that would be fine. But uh, let's say that you're streaming, you know, fitness instruction or something like that. You can't really add music live, you know, in the Motive app or the, the video app. Um, that might be possible on a PC where the computer's sound hardware kind of takes care of everything. So if you start playing a slideshow like we did earlier, um, if you um, you know put on music through Spotify or something like that, the computer kind of handles that and puts that in the stream. Uh, but yeah, on a portable device, you're more limited. And I would say if you want to explore that further, um, and this is a good time to mention that if you go to shore.com slash contact, we have a really handy form there that you can fill to open up a ticket with our support team. And that'll open up a, a ticket with Justin's uh, colleagues and coworkers. And those- <laughs> Justin those, personally. Yeah, probably like, Justin. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> those guys and gals are are great. And if they don't know the, the off answer offhand, they they usually are pretty good at sort of trying to seek it out if it's, if it's, if it's findable. <laughs> <laughs> the best we're the best in the business our support team we've been voted that like a lot of years level support yeah that's right that's them all right and we so can the, take a lot of pride in that yeah you, yes. you should well um, deserved so the next question beyond the motive app do we have a desktop recording tool uh i'd like an application or software yeah, yeah. we do not we do not yeah, sure we, does we not, do not. Um, one thing I could point out, you know, that any settings that you're making in the Motive app, um, you know, they will be retained in the mic. So if I have yes. you know, my original OG MV88 and I want to set it 
actually that's a bad example uh, if you've noticed behind me here there's a uh, mv88 plus and that one you can actually use a uh, usb cable and plug it into a computer you'll get audio input and output through it but there's really no way to control it on your computer so you first mm -hmm. have to set it up on your phone and then you can plug it into your computer and use it and i mentioned earlier there's apps like audacity that can be downloaded for free and those are those are handy uh, audio editing apps so i would i would recommend something like that mm -hmm. fantastic all right when you do the light audio editing <clears throat> excuse me when you do the editing in the audio on excuse me when you do light editing on the audio file using the Motive app, does it overwrite your original file or save a copy? I believe you have the choice to save it or overwrite. I think it does retain the original file, so you'll end up with another file yeah. of the uh, you know, edited audio. And that's the same thing I'm if looking. you try to convert it to a different format. You're still left with the original audio. It just yes. other one that shows up in the, uh, the playlist, so to speak, or, you know, the, the, right. uh, the recordings that you can see in the Motive app. Uh, next question: Are there cables for the MV88 Plus that connect that can connect to a USB-C phone? Yes, there are. So the MV88 Plus comes with micro USB to Lightning and micro USB to USB-C, which is that Android typical Android connector. So yes, right. and and, and we should also that. point out that um, there are some Apple devices like the iPad Pro that have a USB-C connector on it. Uh, technically, it's not a USB interface. It's a proprietary <laughs> Apple interface. So yes. unfortunately, we don't have any mics that work with the uh, iPad Pro with USB-C, sorry to say. It's data only, not data and audio, as it is on an Android USB-C. All right. Uh, next question. Does Sure provide a wireless solution to send audio to the phone or camera? Not currently. Yeah. Uh, that one I would just refer back to the example using an MVI and any of the wireless systems that we make or, you know, really yeah. any wireless system that gives you an XLR or a quarter inch output, plug that into the MVI and you're up and running. Yeah. Um, so, you know, as far as being yeah, in the field yes. with that, you know, you may have to figure out a way to power the wireless receiver or you can use, mm -hmm. um, you know, in the past we've offered some portable receivers that go onto a camera shoe mount. So something like that. But uh, yeah, there again, I would use the MVI. Great. Yep. Okay, next question. Is there more signal processing available via the app, such as verb, compression, et cetera? Compression, yes. Reverb, no. Um, so, yes, yeah, so what you can edit is your EQ, your compression, your limiter. Um, There's a high pass filter if you want to roll off high pass the filter. frequencies. But yeah, I would consider the reverb, delay, and things like that. You know, those are more artistic effects. And um, mm -hmm. that's where I think you're better off going into. Uh, you know, something like Audacity or Logic or Reaper, an audio editor where um, you can use the built-in effects or there's, you know, probably literally thousands of different plugins you can use, you know, for, uh, you know, the Abbey Road reverb tank or whatever they've got, you know, there's a lot of, <laughs> a lot of choices out there. So, uh, yes. yeah, unfortunately, we don't, we don't offer that in the app or even, you know, for editing purposes. Okay. Next question. Should I record video through the Motive video app or just go through my iPhone camera? That's a preference, but I, I prefer our video app just because you can change your exposure level. You can see the gain monitoring right from within the app, change your frames per second. It's just got a few more features that you can activate while using the app as opposed to the video app that comes with your device. But you can use yeah, either. Just, yeah. Right. Absolutely. It's easy to use the camera app and, you know, stress once again, you have to go into your Motive Audio app first and set the levels. That's another advantage that motive video has is that you can set those in the app. I think there are some third party apps that also let you adjust things like that, like Filmic Pro, mm -hmm. yep. uh, but you do have to pay for that one. And um, yeah, if you want the extra features, use motive video, or if you just want something simple, you know, if it's just, uh, you know, kids, um, you know, piano recital or something like that, you know, go ahead and just use the, uh, the phone's camera app. There's no problem there either. E either way, mm -hmm. it ends up in the camera roll. So um, yeah. Definitely. All right. Do you have any recommendations for positioning an MV88 Plus for recording voice and acoustic guitar at the same time? Laura, I bet you can answer this one. I definitely can, but I see Justin nodding, so I'm like, ooh. Well, I was it? just going to say, let's kick that one over to Laura, because I think you did that <laughs> even just recently here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I for my 
the 88 plus is just such an awesome mic that I use it for everything. I record a, a baby grand piano with that just by simply putting it in the center of my piano and pointing it just slightly down for acoustic guitar and voice. I set it on the desktop right in front of me in kind of in between the two sources. So splitting the difference between my voice and where the guitar is, I would put the mic in between and, uh, and I kind of experiment to see if I, if I wanted it in stereo to get that stereo image, or if I want to just keep it in cardioid, it can still capture it, but I tend to put it in stereo for the, the polar pattern and just set it in the middle of myself and the guitar. Awesome. Yeah. That's another, uh, you know, another, uh, advantage to, you know, you can make a few test recordings, make sure that you're getting yeah. the levels you want, you know, are you getting too much sound from the room and not enough, mm -hmm. you know, maybe the guitar is too loud, you want to favor your voice and so maybe raise it up on a mic stand a little bit more. Um, you know, those are things that you kind of have to listen to and figure out what you prefer. Um, same with thing the with the onboard stereo. headphones. That's, That's right. <laughs> or, you know, That's record something great. and listen back. That's a great way to do it. Um, but, you know, there's all kinds of information out there as far as where the best uh, mic placement option is for acoustic guitar. Um, and, uh, you know, we don't really have time to get into that, but there's a lot of great resources <laughs> on the web for that. Great. Yes. Next question. Are Motive products available on Amazon? Absolutely. For sure. Yep. Yeah, Amazon is a uh, authorized, sure, retailer. <laughs> That's the professional answer. <laughs> uh, this one's interesting. I, like I think this is this is a fun application one. Uh, what would okay. you recommend? What would your recommended setup be for general audio recording while on a boat, open deck, for fishing related content? Just personal lavalier microphones, or is there an omnidirectional setup that could, should be considered? Two to three people on the boat, often facing away from the middle of the boat. Hmm. Well, that's a fun one. There's so well, many different ways you could do it. <laughs> I know. I mean, are you wanting to capture, you'd want to capture the sound of the ocean too, right? Like it, that's important. Do you want the field recording aspect where you're hearing the waves and the gulls and the fish? Fish don't make much noise, but you know what I mean? Or, you know, are you wanting it to be just the fisher people that you're capturing? Because labs are going to be your best choice for capturing the directional content of the speaking voices. But then you could also set up an MV88 plus facing in the open deck off the stern out to get that kind of ocean and sky and all that fun that'd be really cool what are you doing it what are you using it for yeah, yeah. <laughs> tell me more um, <laughs> well this would be a good time I, to know. go to the go to sure.com slash contact open up a contact form and start the conversation yeah, i think right. i think that the apps team would actually enjoy that nice sort of change of pace <laughs> yeah um, yeah because there's a number of ways to do that yeah. But yeah. Right. Some of those might not be practical on a boat, you know, where you don't necessarily mm -hmm. have a power source. So you may have to make some compromises and, um, you know, just have one person who's a talker and wear a lavalier mic. That's pretty simple. Um, but keep in well, mind that it's MVL that. too. Yeah. You do that MVL, but, you know, just to record directly into the phone for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, again, consider the proximity to the mic that, you know, you could use an MV88 like Laura was suggesting, but it's picking up the, uh, you know, the engine noise, it's picking up the waves, Everything. it's picking up birds, <laughs> and then hopefully the people who are in the in the shot talking. But you know, I guess at and that point, fish. probably like, yeah, the fish. Those really loud fish. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, moving on. We still have a lot more questions. Let's keep going. Um <laughs> This next one is actually a suggestion, and I'm going to answer it because there's an answer to it. Suggestion, include the SE215 in a kit with the MV88+. Plus. We do! <laughs> oh my gosh, we do! <laughs> so in addition to the MV88 Plus video kit, there's also a product called the um, uh, Videographer Kit. Not to be confused with Video Kit. Videographer Kit. <laughs> and that kit includes the MV88 Plus, um, a pair of SE215, or excuse me, everything that comes with the MV88 Plus video kit, a pair of SE215 clear headphones specifically you know to be used for monitoring but you can use them for anything else obviously and then also it includes the wind jammer uh the uh the little furry which um i know we didn't talk about it here but if you are doing a lot of things outdoors mm -hmm. i highly recommend getting the wind jammer it does so much for cutting it's a rye coat um if you're familiar with that company they do all sorts of professional grade um uh, uh windscreens um, so it's great for outdoors. Um, and the really cool thing about that kit is um, in the U.S., the MV88 video, the MV88 Plus video kit goes for two forty nine. dollars um, The videographer kit goes for two ninety nine, dollars and for just about $50 additional dollars, you're getting a pair of headphones and a windjammer, and you're saving money in the long run. So if you need the earphones and you need kit. the windscreen, 
go for the videographer kit. Videographer kit, you will save money in the long run. So, <laughs> sorry, sorry for that. Which is also also exactly. available from Shore retailers, authorized retailers. Exactly. Such as all right. Uh, next question. <laughs> You're going to like this one, Justin. Is there an up-to-date list of apps that work with the MV88? You mentioned that apps sometimes <laughs> change compatibility, and it'd be nice to have a source to go to so we'd know without having to experiment. We agree. <laughs> yes. yes. Mm -hmm. um, so let's see. There's a list of devices on the MV88 Plus uh, webpage. Um, we're starting to keep and maintain a list of compatible apps. I would suggest contacting us, use that support form on the website. And uh, in a lot of cases, I mean, we just don't know, but what we're trying to do is, um, you know, download those apps, try it out, test it out, and, and just see. I've also seen some apps, like if you go to the developers page, um, Acapella was an example of one that I think singers use. And uh, mm -hmm. right there on their website, it says, you know, this is compatible with these mics, and it did list the Sure models. So, um, you know, a lot of times, you know, we need to do a little research to find out about that. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll try to answer your question as best we can if you write into us. Um, at this time, it's not published on the website, though. So, sure.com slash contact to open up that ticket with the support team. All right, next question. Um, I've used the MV88 Plus to film a session and noticed after the film there's a lip sync issue on the final video. Um, and my artist has already flown out of the country. Any idea why that happened? Oh, I do not. Yeah, that's something I have seen that a couple times before. Um, the recommendation is to um, try opening it up with um, there's there's a uh, there's a uh, media player called VLC, Victor Lima, Charlie, um, that I would try using to open it up and see if the sync is corrected on that one. Um, what mm. we've found is it usually plays back correctly in that, and it also, um, once you upload it, say, to YouTube or whatever, the sync should be okay. Um, that's another one where I, I, I might write in, maybe send us a link to the video. We might be able to tell you more about that. All right. Next question. Why can't you connect multiple motive devices to your computer for USB recording? It only allows one USB to work at a time. Yeah, that is... Uh, dictated by the computer itself. I know I have done it in GarageBand where I've been able to get it to recognize two USB mics, but it is a pain in the tuchus and requires a lot of back end fiddling and whatever. But computers are just inherently supposed to only recognize one USB microphone source, as I understand it, Justin, but maybe you have more yeah. intel um, there. Right. I think what Laura is mentioning on the on the Mac platform, you can use what's called an aggregate device. And I would yeah. recommend going to uh, Apple's support site and you can read more about that. It's sort of a way that you can assign multiple USB sources. Um, it's generally not possible on a Windows platform, as far as I know. But um, if that's what you're needing, then I'd probably look into other interfaces that have multiple inputs. So you can do, you know, two inputs or four or eight, and you know, the sky's the limit. But um, yeah, there are other interfaces out there that might serve you better. Great. Okay. Uh, next question. I think we kind of answered this already, but let's. I'll bring it up again. When trying to record an acoustic instrument and vocals simultaneously, what settings do you suggest for on the Motive app? So depending on the mic, I if you have an 88 or an 88 plus, I would put it into stereo and then I would put it into uh, probably music mode, which is the little speech bubble with a music note in it. But I often experiment between that and the instrument setting. It just depends on on where you are and where your environment is. But the instrument setting is great. The music setting is great. Yeah. Yeah, I would start with those. Um, even, you know, you can, if you're able to monitor in earphones, um, just kind of change them as you're playing and listen to them. You know, if you figure out what your gain setting needs to be, then, you know, once you change the DSP mode, you can set the gain again and, um, you know, just see which one you like. You know, the one for speech isn't necessarily only for speech. I mean, that might sound right. great on a violin or a trumpet or something like that. So, yeah, experimentation is what we'd recommend. And then... Um, you know, figuring out like if you're, uh, I mean, yeah, we can't, can't really get into all the different recording techniques that are out there. But, you know, if you're singing a lot louder than your guitar, then maybe place the mic a little closer to the guitar and kind of balance them out right. that way. It's kind of trial and error, but 
That's what that headphone out is so great for. There's no right answer. And, you know, it's so subjective, too, that, you know, what one person might suggest might not be your preference. So play around with it right. and, and you'll find something you like. You'll figure it out. Trust me. You'll know what you like. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Next question. Are there any plans to integrate Facebook Live with the Motive Video app? Not that I know of. We're always thinking of new ways to do things, but that's not one I've heard of. <laughs> that would require right. some communication with Facebook. Um, so, you know, we're yeah. we're working behind the scenes always to try and expand and improve our product lines. Um, but, you know, I don't know if any of those conversations are happening. And if they were, I couldn't really be at liberty to say anyway. So, sorry. Exactly. <laughs> but we are aware Very and good. we are always trying to make sure that our products are going to work for you as many ways as possible. Right. And one, one of the big takeaways from the webinar is, you know, use the resources in the Motive app, the meter, the DSP modes, you know, get the sound that you're looking for. And then you can kind of switch over to the other apps and, um, you know, go from there. So, yeah. um, you know, a lot of that kind of falls in the uh, territory of the other apps and what they support and how they work. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, and then somebody was just asking to uh, uh, mention what the names of the apps that we were discussing. Um, so that's the Sure Plus Motive. There's Sure Plus Motive, which is just the audio app. And then there's Sure Plus Motive Video, which is the video app. And audio. it's M-O-T-I-V. Correct. No E at the end. Nope. Right. And if you just look in the App Store, the Play, it's Google Play, um, you should be able to search for Sure, S-H-U-R-E, and find those apps pretty, uh, pretty immediately. Indeed. Yep. Okay. Um, there was a question about the other third-party apps? Uh, no, I mentioned? think it was it was just our apps, okay. I think. Yeah. yeah, it was like Audacity and Reaper. All mm -hmm. right. Uh, oh, and somebody just said, once you've set the mic, you can run it in Facebook Live, and it will take the audio from the mic, as with Instagram Live. I've tested it and proven it. So I would, I would probably say probably on an iOS device, but yes. Yes, yes. Um, I would point out that um, when you plug in um, the Motive mic to a portable device, it might not turn on right away. Um, it doesn't know that you plugged in a mic necessarily. So you'd have to go to uh, an app that uses the mic and the camera app set to video mode is a great test of this. So if you want to know yeah. is my mic working, you got an MV88 or an MV88 plus, uh, plug it in, go to the camera app, go to video, and it should power on at that point. Um, generally, if the mic is turned on, you're getting audio from the mic, but you can always you know, tap on the mic lightly <laughs> and make sure that it's picking up the audio too. Indeed. Okay, and then <laughs> this one is great. Uh, I think this is just a fun one to wrap up on. How many Sure products do you all have at home? My gosh, you guys are well equipped and ready for this work from home thing. <laughs> <laughs> Can I do my bouquet. Oh, oh, here we go. Here comes Laura's mic bouquet. Look at that. My bouquet. That my is bouquet. lovely. I have just what's right here. <laughs> I have, yeah. you can't see it. I'm going to angle a little bit. I have my special, my limited edition. Oh, yeah. Uh, you can't see them because it's dark here. Wait, there we go. I've got, ah, uh, you can't see them. Uh, <laughs> but I have several limited edition Super 55s and the SM58 Anniversary Edition. We we have some, and that's just this gear. Like, I have my wireless <laughs> rack downstairs. <laughs> got my, I got my go. KSM32 right there. Yeah. This is my studio. <laughs> Right here, so, studio. Yeah. Oh yeah, and then I've got Business. my 1540s, and I've got my 545s. Yeah, oh, yeah. And, yeah we're <laughs> we have some yeah. options. We, we, got, we have some things. Yeah, we have the, the toys. We Although the funny thing is, like when we did go on lockdown, um, I was on another webinar, and we were talking about you know our portable microphones, and nobody that was presenting on the webinar had an MV51, and I was like. I have oh, an MV51 man. and MV5 at my desk at work, and I can't get to the office, obviously. Yeah. So, But this guy, this is when you're ready to get oh, serious. Use this. There you go. Your SM7B into your MVI. You can use it without this, but if you want, you can use the cloud lifter. Or the SEDM one. This, yes. And it is just it's my favorite. I almost <laughs> panic bought an SM7B. You should have. I, I know. This is my oh, desert island mic right here. It's a good one. Love this guy. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thanks for that little. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you for indulging us, everybody, in that little dissension into our our sure craziness in our homes. <laughs> for ones that yes. are older than I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know, and then right? Justin with his classic, his Justin classic wins. 51. Seriously, he wins. You had oh, to do some fancy wiring on that, correct? Because it was an amphenol. 
It is an amphenol connector. I uh, actually found this from a seller on eBay, and I can't remember the guy's name right now, unfortunately, but uh, he was able to supply a cable. But those amphenol connectors are kind of hard to find. Yeah. Uh, but it's wired similar to an XLR, and uh, the other end of it, fortunately, does have an XLR cable, so it plugs right into my MVI. You know. All right. That I'm was pretty, a fun pretty one. pretty happy to have gotten a hold of this one, and it sounds pretty good. It yeah, does. It does. It's classic. All right. So there's just one last question that I'm going to take. Um, is there a webinar for home office with motive? I would love to hear how you guys push it out there. And we did do actually one of those a couple weeks ago. Um, so if you go to sure.com slash webinars and scroll down to the archive section, um, there is one about using sure products for home conferencing. And we do, we actually used several, we give you all sorts of samples. We had a bunch of people on it that were using different things, different motive products. Um, so you can check it out there. So, all right. I think that just about wraps it up. We want to thank you all so much for joining us today. We hope you learned a little something. I know I always do. And we hope to see you on the next one. Everybody take care. Thanks, everybody. Right, take care, everyone.